Our next guest was a battler from birth, so she says, a twin who decided she wouldn't breathe until she was about eight minutes old. She's had breathtaking success ever since in running, road and track cycling and then mountain biking. It's a welcome to Peter Mullins. How are you? Welcome, Peter. Welcome. I thought your mountain bashes were meant to be all banged up in the head. You're a Under spunk. Underneath it all, but thank you. Bruises and scars still are there. Yeah. You'd have been a nightmare as a kid trying to decide what sort of turbo activities you might tackle first. You start off as a runner, right? Yeah, well, when I was really young, I was quite plump. I like to call it round. Okay. Some people call it fat. <laughs> um, and then, uh, yeah, I was a runner. So, runner quite young, uh, moved into triathlon and duathlon, and then eventually into bike riding, and have kind of just moved through the disciplines until I got to mountain biking. But at some incredible young age, you ran like 50Ks, right? At 13? Yeah, when I was 13, yeah. Wow. I've kind of always been up for a bit of a challenge, and that was definitely a challenge. How long did that take? Uh, I think it was nearly five hours. Fair enough. A little bit of walking, a little bit of running. Wow, that's, that's very, very impressive. impressive. Yeah. I first met you, Peter, when we were in the national team together in 2008. We went to that bloody awful tour in New Zealand and it was windy and freezing. <laughs> Do you remember that? I remember. But what I found really interesting was that in 2009, when you were picked again for the AIS national team, you elected to stay home. And since then, you've had some fantastic domestic results. Yeah, I'd been uh, an elite level athlete, probably, oh well, training all, all my life since I was about 10. So um, I'd done a good 10 years of that and I kind of just had a bit of a change of heart. I wanted to stay at home and, and get a job and, Didn't and, you fall in and love stay with, with my boy. family. And I met a boy. <laughs> I met a boy uh, from boys. Bendigo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jeez. So I've been I've been in Bendigo for four years now, and he uh, he helped me find my latest passion, which is mountain biking. I'd never ridden a mountain bike before, and he got me into that. So I'm pretty grateful, and and we've done some amazing things. Uh, not only travelled Australia, we went to South Africa earlier this year for the Absa Cape Epic, and uh, we've got some pretty big plans for next year. Is he a racer too? Yeah, yeah, he races. What's his name? Come on, Jared Maroney. You love him. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Ed. <laughs> No comment. <laughs> oh my God, she doesn't love him. She doesn't love him. <laughs> uh, and he derailed your career. Yeah, he'll kill been. you for that. Yeah, 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 probably. So you won the Otway Odyssey, the 100 kilometre mountain bike race twice, which is pretty a sensational result. I've heard that's incredibly technical, challenging course. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's one of one of the few results I'm pretty proud of. I went went back this year and got second to uh, Renata Buscher from Switzerland, and was nearly even more proud of that than I was of my wins. But um, I've done some amazing races throughout the world, and that's definitely one of my favourite. How do you decide which of the events that you've tried out and you've tried out a lot that you love the most? I, my passion just changes as I go through life. I think I, I seek challenges more than um, necessarily things I'm good at. So I like to find something maybe I'm not that good at and something that I can improve on. And I think mountain biking always presents that challenge in every race. It's so technical and, I, and I've kind of dabbled in the, in the longer stuff, the endurance racing and the stage racing. So yep. I'm looking forward to attacking that cross country season next year. So where do you, do you want to take it the next level? The mountain yeah, mountain? so uh, Olympics I want... on the horizon? Yeah, I hope so. I won the uh, Australian Championships this year. So next year I've got plans to race all of the World Cups. Uh, hopefully the Commonwealth Games if I get selected. And uh, maybe oh, that's right. I watched that well. race that you won on TV. It's just come to me. <laughs> Carry on. So we know mountain bike's not a sport that gets a lot of funding within this country and we've seen Dan McConnell and Beck have to go and fund themselves even to qualify for London Olympics. Yeah. That'll be a bit of a challenge but you're obviously supported very well by sponsors. Very well supported by amazing sponsors. Uh, Target come on board with this this year and Trek have been with me for a little while now and uh, I plan to stay with them in the future. They're amazing not only on the domestic scene internationally and that kind of gives me some great opportunities that wouldn't have presented themselves otherwise. And so you've got to really stick at it too that. because Cairns have got this great coup of having the yeah. mountain bike championships for two years was 20 14 and 16, something like that? Yeah, so uh, we've got um, the World Championships that we're kind of vying for and the World Brilliant. Cups that are that are planned. And I think if, um, although the funding's not there, I think it's amazing that Australia can buy for those sorts of races and bring them bring them to the country and hopefully open up Australia's eyes to how great mountain biking is. Well, it's going to be hot racing up there, though, sticky and hot and humid. I won't, com won't complain. No, you'll be right. <laughs> well, what do you think of the Tour de France so far? Yeah, I think, I think it's been very exciting. I love the concept of starting with a road race. I think uh, those close time gaps this early in the race is what kind of makes it really, really exciting. And, uh, and I think it's, I think it's great the sprinters get a chance to wear that yellow jersey early on. Yeah. It's, a, it's a shame with the crashes in the uh, in the first yeah. day, but I think it's going to be quite interesting for the first week. Now, so when you come back from a, a long day's training, you dabble in a bit of house renovating and doing upping. Yeah, yeah. So um, I work back in uh, Bendigo, and yeah. my boyfriend and I like to do a bit of part-time renovation. Uh, we've done probably three houses together now. So We're still uh, together. Yeah, coming towards the end of this one. That, and then, that one's uh, a keeper. She, she does like. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and then try and probably get rid of that one before we go overseas next year. Fantastic. Fantastic. Mm. Good on you. And uh, so when will we next see you vying for a, a dash to the finish line? 
Um, well, I've actually been out with a back injury for the last eight weeks, yeah. so I'm probably not going to be back racing till about September. Right. But I hope to come back full force. We can do plenty of plastering and stumping and painting until then. Quality. Quality. Yeah. Good on you, Peter. Lovely to meet you. Thank you. And best of luck in the future, Thank okay? You.